Hello everybody, this is another amazing tutorial from a mediocre person. On this next four episodes, I'm going to be covering the project window, the source window, the sequence or timeline window, and the program window. With that, let's get started on the project window down here. I'm going to move my mouse over this window and I'm going to hit the tilde key, which is above the tab key, and go full screen with this so we can kind of take a look at the features in the project window. First of all, the project window is the window that contains all of your media. And this also organizes all your media. Part of the organization are, would be all these folders in here. Premiere, they don't call them folders. They call them a neat film term called bins. This comes from the old days of uh, film bins. If you want to Google fil film bins, you'll see some images of bins that they used to cut up strips of film and put inside when they were doing editing. They are literally organized into bins, uh, usually per scene that were large baskets to contain the film. So that's why they that's why they call these bins. Now if I arrow down a folder here, it will show what's in it'll show the contents of that folder. If you click on this little arrow right there, it takes it open and shows what's in it, and you click on it again and it collapses it. Now the way you create bins is this little icon down in the bottom right hand corner, this right here where it says new bin. It looks like a little folder icon. You can click that and it will create a new folder. One thing I should be aware of here is I clicked new bin, but look, I cannot see a new bin here. It's because I had this folder selected right there. If I arrow that open, and by the way, when you want to open these up, you can arrow to the right and it opens them up. Arrow to the left will collapse them. Arrows up and down will navigate between the different items. So if I arrow up to the stills folder here or the stills bin and I arrow to the right, it'll open it up and there's my new bin right there that it, that it, that it generated. I'm going to hit delete and clear that. But now, if I have something selected here, I can do control or on a Mac it's command, control shift A, and it deselects everything. And now I can hit down here, new bin, or I can simply hit control or command on a Mac, uh, forward slash, which is right next to the right shift key. So control forward slash will create a new bin. And look, it's already highlighted. What I'll see people do is they'll, uh, once this is already highlighted, they'll click like this and go delete, 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 and then start typing in the name. That is completely unnecessary because it is already highlighted in blue ready for you to rename. So watch this. I'm going to delete, control forward slash, and just start typing video or something like that, whatever I want this to be called, whatever I want that bin to be called. I'm just going to select that and delete it. I want to show you some of the different types of items that you will find in uh, your project window. First of all, as I select one of these files here and I hit arrow right to open it up, right here you'll notice these icons. These little icons represent still images or graphics or something of that nature. Photoshop, fi Photoshop files will come in as a PS, but uh, right here you'll notice this little icon that represents a still image. I'm going to arrow up, go to my stills folder, arrow to the left, arrow down, and then we're going to go under the My Music bin here. I'm going to arrow right and look at this. You have these little icons here that have a little tiny waveform on it. Those represent sound files. I'm going to arrow up, arrow left, go down to my card here. And now we'll notice here, here you've got a little film strip. This means this file here contains video. And then you've got a little waveform as well. It's got a, it's got the film strip and the waveform, which means this has film, this has video and audio combined into one file. Now if I go down to these ones, these ones were shot on a red camera where the audio was disabled. So it just has simply a film strip. And that film strip means that this is just a video file. And finally here, we have this little icon right there. This has these little strips with a playhead on it. That is representative of a timeline or sequence. If you see those little icons, that means it's a timeline or a sequence. Now up here in your project window, you've got a little search key here. Searching for something with a specific name, you can simply click your cursor in there and you can start typing. I know I've got some music here that has, starts with the title what, so I'm going to type in W-H-A-T and it'll, bring up, it'll open up all the files. It'll open up all the files that have the word what in it. And there it is right there. So I can clear that. Just make sure, now I'll notice as I start arrowing down, there's nothing in these folders at all. It's because it's just narrowing it down to this what file here. So I'm going to close that. And down here at the bottom, I've got an adjustment layer. You can. This will also contain generated items, such as what we'll get into later on, adjustment layers and titles and black videos and color mats and a whole bunch of different things that you can generate. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to grab my sequences here, and I'm going to kind of hide them in a folder. I'm going to drop them into this little folder right there. Now let's say you're just looking for sequences. You can actually click in here, and you can just type in the word S-E-Q-U, 
just type in, start typing in sequence, and it will bring up all the items that are sequences in the entire project. Just kind of a little, little um, shortcut there for finding where your sequences are located if you don't know where you put what folder or what bin you put them in. I'm going to grab these two here. I'm going to drag them out of these fo my folder. And the way you drag something out of a folder is you grab it and drag it to the left. And notice that little, cr that little no symbol that's on the hand right there gripping. I'm going to grab it to the left and I'm going to move it just slightly right here and notice it disappears. If I let, drag it to the left and let go, it drags it out of that folder. Now it's in my main project area here. Just cleared my search so I can continue here in this window. Let's go up to this little item right here and hit this. This is a drop down menu. And first of all, you can cl uh, close the panel or undock the panel. That's not going to be as important as these items down here. Uh, first of all, this is one of the more important items right here is your preview area. If this is unchecked, you notice it just collapses this area right here and it's a lot smaller. You don't have your, it's called your preview area. If I select this and pull it down and say preview area, it opens up a big area right here with the little preview window. Now what you can do is I can select a clip here. When any clip that you select, any item that you select down here, it's going to show several attributes of that clip right here. First of all, it shows a little thumbnail preview. You can hit play and I'll play this little thumbnail here and kind of play through the footage. Uh, you can actually create a poster frame for it. If you so find something that you like to make it be its thumbnail, like I like that right there, you can actually take a picture right there and that just became the thumbnail as opposed to the beginning frame. But up here, you've got the name of the clip. You've got, your, uh, you've got the type of clip. This is a movie clip. And down here shows that it has audio that belongs to it. But this is its resolution, 4096 by 2160. 4096 pixels by 2160. This is your pixel aspect ratio. Not as important these days because most footage that you shoot in is now 1.0 and it doesn't change very much unless you're using some older footage. Shows how many times it's been used in this project, how many times it's been used in sequences in here. Down here you've got your duration and you also have your frame rate. Frames per second, 23.976, which is essentially 24 frames per second, but it's called drop frame, which we'll get into later. Down here we've got the audio attributes. This is 48,000 hertz. 24-bit audio with two mono channels as the red camera shoots as a standard. This is really good just to quickly view the attributes of each file that you're working with and or sequences. If you select the sequence, it'll show the resolution of the sequence, pixel aspect ratio, duration, frame rate, and audio quality set up for that sequence. Now, now a couple of things you can do to this window here is you can arrange by name and click your name here and it arranges by alphabetical order or you can arrange by these attributes. These over here are a whole bunch of different attributes that pertain to every individual clip and folder here. If I arrow down a folder here, this is what's called the metadata. Here you've got the frame rate, you've got where the media begins, time code, where it ends, you have the media duration, if you have in and out points selected, the duration, the resolution, a whole bunch of different things. You can actually add things to this list here. I'm going to grab the scroll bar and drag it to the right, and it ends right there. So it only has kind of the major ones uh, already up by default. If you right click on this, you can go to metadata display, and then in the metadata display, you can arrow this down, and you can actually add your own uh, custom properties, or you can scroll down and select ones that you want to show up. Let's say I want them to show up, these have proxy files attached or not. I'm going to hit proxy here, I'm going to hit OK, and it doesn't show it now because it's over here that added it to the very end. There it is at the end. I can actually grab this and drag it over and move it if I want. See, I've got this little tab moving and let go, and now my proxy tab is right there, and it shows, yes, this has pro proxy files attached to this footage right here. You can go under this metadata display and add and add as much as you want. It's got it's very very extensive. It just has so much stuff in here showing all the attributes of every individual clip that you could even possibly think of. And if it doesn't show it in there, you can actually add a property and you can script it. Moving to the bottom left hand corner of the project window, we've got these little two icons right here. One is list view, one is icon view. What right now we are on list view. This is selected as blue. Watch what happens when we select icon view. Turns everything into an icon. You got these bigger folders here. You have your adjustment layer. Have your timelines here, and you can see that this is a timeline, not a clip, because it's got this little timeline icon in the bottom right-hand corner. Usually, this is just my preference. I like my main project window in list view. Now we're going to show you how to open up a bin here. If you want to open up a bin, you can do this. You can uh, drop down this little arrow here and open them up like that, expand them, or you can double click on it. Double clicking on it will open up this free-floating window here. And this free-floating window shows the con uh, the contents of that bin right there. But this free-floating window can kind of obstruct your view of other items on your while you're trying to edit, which can be annoying sometimes. So what I'm going to do here, um, another little option we've got is holding down your Option key or Alt key on a Mac and double-clicking. 
and look what it does. It opens up a separate tab. It is added as a tab up here to the project tabs here. You also, you've got media, browser, library, info, effects, markers, history. We'll go through that in a minute. But right here, we've got the stills window that opened up. You can actually rearrange these. Say you want to keep these close to your project window. I can grab that and just drag it to the left like this. And look at that. It moves it. And now it is right next to my project window. Here's my project window in list view. Here's my stills tab in list view. Now I can go down and hit my icon view, and it brings up a th brings up thumbnails of these still images that I have. I can grab this little slider down here to adjust the size, and you can drag it to the right, and it expands it and makes them larger. Let's show some video clips here. I'm going to hold down Option and double click on one of my cards here. Opens up this menu in list view. I'm going to move my card when my card one over here, so I've got those tabs open. And to close the tab, by the way, I'm going to close my Stills tab. You simply do Control or Command W for window, and it closes that window. Whenever you hit Control or Command W, it closes a window. Now under card one here, I'm going to hit icon view, and I've got these thumbnails. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. One kind of cool thing with Premiere is if you move your mouse over an item, and you just move your mouse left and right, notice I'm not clicking, I'm not right clicking, I'm not left clicking, I'm just hovering over and moving my mouse left and right. That causes this image to scrub. You can scrub through the image really quick and see what is on that exact image just by simply moving to the left or right. And you can see kind of a little mini playhead right there as I scrub this back and forth. Now you have different arrangements for icon view down here. You can click on these little arrow right here and tell it how to sort the icon. I wish it had this as a default, but it doesn't. I like to do it as the view, as the list view sort, which basically views it the same way that the list view is set, which by default is by alphabetical order. So I'm just going to hit that and I'll rearrange things by alphabetical order there. And it goes from left to right, then that down to the next uh, column and left to right and left to right and left to right and so on. But if you want this to remain on a certain item for a thumbnail, as we showed you up here in the preview window, if your preview window is if your pre preview window is active, you can simply select a clip and you can grab through this and find what you want as your new thumbnail. And now you just take a picture and it changes that to the new thumbnail there. See, as, as I click away from it, suddenly that becomes the, the new thumbnail for that icon right there. So if I want to close that window, Control or Command W, go to my project window here, and let's move to the bottom down here, bottom right. First of all, you've got this little icon right down here that's called Automate to Sequence. If you're doing a whole bunch of still images and you've brought them in and you've made sure that they were all at a very specific duration before you brought them in, if you're doing a bunch of stills and automating to your sequence here, let me, let me go to my sequence really quick, just show you a quick feature here. I'm going to hit end, go to the very end of my timeline here, and hit these three items right there, these uh, still images. I'm going to automate these things to a sequence here. You click that and look what it does. It brings up this little window. It says, do you want to do it by selection order? Which, I, yes, I, you can sort the order. You can uh, you can just do the selection order, the order that they were selected in. And it's going to place them sequentially. It's going to do an overwrite edit or you can do an insert edit. And it's going to do a clip overlap, which is basically a dissolve. A whole bunch of options in here to apply a default audio and video transition if you're doing video clips as opposed to still images. And you hit OK and boom, it puts those things in here on the timeline and puts a dissolve in between them. So kind of nice if you just want to hurry and put a whole bunch of video clips or a whole bunch of audio or a whole bunch of still image to, images to your timeline quickly. Bottom right hand corner down here, you have a little search engine once again to find files and you can find them by uh, by colors. We'll get into these colors later on. You can color code things and you can search and just narrow it down to the things. If you're looking for B-roll specifically and you've been color coding everything as B-roll, you can quickly find those things by a very specific color or what they call an operator. Down here we showed you how to create a new, new bin. You can click that to create a new bin and also your new item icon. You click on this and you have several things. You can generate, this is basically a generator here. You can generate a new sequence a new offline file, adjustment layer, titles, new bars and tone, black video, color mats, captions, HD bars and tone, universal countdown leader, a whole bunch of different things down here that you can generate generate into your project window. Let's do just like right now a color mat. And I'm going to hit OK. This It's going to base it on the sequence that I have opened right now. I'm going to hit OK and it's going to ask what color do you want it. Let's do a white mat. And I'm just going to hit OK. And we'll call this white mat. Hit OK. And there it is right there. Now I can grab this, drag it to the source monitor, and I've got kind of this eternal white matte video clip that can be dropped down into my sequence, and all that does is plays white. So that's one of the generators right there. This is the specific project tab that we're covering, but you also have the media browser, which I covered in another episode. You've got libraries, which is basically online stock library from Adobe that you can grab media from. The info tab actually shows whatever you have selected in here. It'll show all the attributes of that item right here in, in more detail. You have your effects tab, which we'll cover in a future episode, which uh, you'll, is where you can add effects 
to uh, our video clips and audio clips, markers. We're going to cover that in a very specific episode as well. And history. So this is the history tab right here. And this shows a list of all the moves that I've made since the uh, project has been opened up here. And these are all the moves that I've done. It keeps a little history of everything. When I close this project and save it and open it back up, this will be gone. So this saves it while you've got the project open. And you can undo one step at a time by going back, 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 back like that. And this is, has undone all these things. These are grayed out, but now you can simply redo by clicking on one at a time or skipping to the end and redoing everything. Or you can go to the very beginning, to the very beginning, uh, since I had this project open, click right there, and everything has been undone. Or you can find it in the middle and so on. So this is a really nice kind of undo, redo sort of uh, option that you have here under the History tab. That pretty much concludes this episode on the project window. On the next episode, I will be covering the source window.